this is where you need to look perfect. What I would suggest is backing up with your dog so, so your dog sees your hand. Shake that to establish communication. Walk backwards, you should look at me. Walk backwards, get away from your hand, and take your dog into the ring. Now, when you enter the ring, your dog is gonna wanna look at everything that's going on in this ring. So to combat that, you need to shake your hand the second you get here to get them to follow that palm that direction right there. When you get to that corner, you shake your hand and turn your palm like you're reading your watch. So everybody turn your palm like you're reading a watch. That's the way you turn your palm. Don't do this, because this is telling your dog, go up in the sky. <laughs> okay, so I've given you some really good advice. I want you to bring your dogs in one at a time. You're gonna go all the way around. My first dog is going to set up right here and then six feet apart all the way around. Okay, first dog please. Okay, your palm's not in the right direction. Yep, there you go. So your dog was following you but you weren't communicating, so palm the other way, nope. So when you made that corner right there, you had your palm facing that way. So look at me. Okay, I shake my hand, my palm goes like this. I want my dog to go that way. So, and then, once I get on the straightaway, shake my hand, I want my dog to go forward. Okay, so try that again. You'll find that if you communicate with your dogs, they'll watch your hand. If you start to not communicate, then they'll blow you off. Palm forward. Nope. Come back. You're going palm down. Watch my hand. If I want to go that way, my palm is like this. Okay. And, then turn. and then turn is like this. Look at me. Turn is like that. Okay. Okay. Nope. There you go. Okay, now palm, there it is. Forward, turn, okay. So you lost it right here. Because you keep doing this. That's not a signal. Look at me. That is a signal. Let out some lead. Forward, turn. There it is. Forward, turn. There it is, beautiful. <laughs> okay, so you're right there. Do you see how the dog responded to that? Okay. Yes. In the corner. So if I'm forward, I turn which way? Okay. So if you want to make a turn, you're gonna you're like this. You're gonna shake your hand, turn, like you're reading your watch. Yep. Okay. So come on in and. Don't get too close to the Dane. Yep, turn. Okay, so you did not, you didn't give a turn signal. <laughs> so you got rear-ended. <laughs> okay, and stop looking at your dog because now it, it's hard for the dog to see your hand and your eyes at the same time. Shake your hand, turn. That's a little better, but you didn't shake your hand before the signal. Okay. So you went from here to like this. Okay. So you're warning the dog something's gonna happen, then you turn, okay? See how easy this skill is? <laughs> you can verbally say turn. You can verbally say turn, yep. Look at that, it worked. Yeah, turn. Look at that, woo, the turn. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, you're too close. Okay, so if you come in right here, you have no room to free stack your dog now. Now here's the other thing that's gonna happen. Next person comes in, 
and go ahead and get a little closer. Next person comes in and they're here. What happens? You have no room to do anything. <laughs> you at least kiss me first. You know? <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to set your dog here. Okay. See how far she is from that dog? So now, if I come in right behind your dog, have you have all that space to move up. Yep. And I would say, I'm, go ahead and stay here. I'm going to split the difference to give us a better shot. You know, say something nice. But now she'll have more room to work. So that's what I call real estate right there. If you don't establish your real estate, then they're going to take advantage of you. And if, especially if you get close to that Dane over there, then I'm going to come in like this if I'm a dirty handler, and I'm going to block the view of your dog. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. But that's what can happen, and that's what does happen. So I would give more space. I would have your dog's front feet over here. Whatever you think you should have for space, do more. Okay, see, now she has room to work right there. You guys should be doing the same thing. Okay, next dog. And look good right here at the gate. Okay, do you have a treat in that hand? Okay, get it right in that nose. There you go. Shake, turn, beautiful, easy, easy, good. Shake, turn, kind of, sort of. Good, good, good. Not bad, not bad, especially with a dog that wants to. And I want you to give her a big hand because she had all that lead out there. That was really nice. Okay, now stop looking at your dog. Okay, what, what is one of the tools that this dog uses to manipulate what they're working? Their eyes. So you're saying, manipulate me. <laughs> That's the last breed you want to have eye contact with right there. Okay. okay, next please. Good, good. Shake. A little late. Good, good. Shake. Good. You see every time she shakes, the dog pays attention? Easy. You got it. Good. Shake. Very nice, very nice, good, nice, give her a hand, good, okay. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you just need to work on the mechanics of this. Okay, next please. Shake, palm forward, let out lead, there it is. Shake, palm, turn your palm, turn your palm, okay. So you did okay with steering your dog with your body, but you had no hand communication whatsoever. You were gating like this the whole time. And it looked like you were pulling a car engine around the ring. Okay. <laughs> it needs to be effortless. So pop on out. Have you ever seen those people at shows where they're showing a dog like this and it looks like, oh yeah, this is really effortless, you know? <laughs> so look at me. Shake your hand, you gate forward. So show me your palm. Don't flip me off. <laughs> Should you see what she went? No, I'm not going to duplicate that. <laughs> so you shake your hand, your palm is forward. You shake your hand, you turn. Okay, so let's see what you got. Shake your hand, palm forward, don't flip anybody off. Good. Shake your hand, turn your palm in. Nope, you didn't turn your palm in. Come here. Now, if you stop concentrating on your dog, you can concentrate on your hand. And then your dog can concentrate on your hand. Now, let me have your dog for a second. Okay. So, show me how you make a left turn. Nope. Yes. It's like you're reading your watch. Okay. So shake your hand, left turn. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, I know. Anybody have any bubble gum? <laughs> okay, shake my hand, I'm going forward. Shake my hand, 
I'm making a turn. Shake my hand, I'm going forward again. Shake my hand, I'm making a turn. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you what to do. Shake your hand, go forward. Perfect. Shake your hand, make a turn. Yes! Shake your hand, go forward. Shake your hand, make a turn. Shake your hand, stop. No. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, if he's here, but it would be like that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. I promise you I'm going to get this. Yes. We're, we're going we're gonna to do this together, and it's going to be beautiful. Okay. So hold that and back up so you look good coming into the ring. No eye contact. Get that dog to focus on that hand. Okay. Show me what you got. Palm forward. No. Kind of. Palm forward. Kind of. Okay, that was better. That was better. Okay, but look at me. Yoo-hoo! Look at me. You're gating like this. What's that telling the dog? Stop. And then you're looking at the dog like this. So what's that doing to your body? Yeah, so that makes the dog gate improperly. You have to be straight. You have to look forward. You have to shake your hand, palm forward. Shake your hand, palm out. Okay, I want you to just go over there and practice. You don't have to run, but get your dog to follow the palm in the direction you're going. Okay, next please. I love you. Nice, shake your hand. See, so you let that dog get too far out there. Shake your hand, turn. Beautiful, that was excellent. Good. I know, and it, it worked great, didn't it? Yeah. See how easy this is? <laughs> okay, let's see what you got. I'm gonna come and give you love every time I come to the corner. Yes, I am. Beautiful, shake forward, shake, turn. Beautiful, shake forward, shake, turn. Beautiful, that was excellent. Wow, isn't this cool? This is, I, I got boost gumps. <laughs> okay, let's see what you got. Okay, love again. Yes, love again. My mom's an idiot. Yes, good. Shake, turn. Nope, the other way. Okay, shake forward, shake, turn. Yes, yes, good, good. All right, nice. Okay, so look at how close you are in the dog in front of you, real estate. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and shoot out that way into that next ring. So come over here. Yeah, <laughs> look at the Vicenji. He says, I'm the king of the hill. Okay, so come into the ring. Sh shake, palm, beautiful, shake. Beautiful, turn, nope, the other way, this way, yes, shake, turn, nope, you're telling your dog, get in under the ground, it's, it, look at, pretend you're reading your watch, that's it, that's it, so start right here, good, end palm, yes, beautiful right there, okay, beautiful, 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 okay, forward, shake, turn, Look at that, guys. That's excellent. I love day two. <laughs> and three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So, everybody head straight all the way down the line. Nice. 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 Come on, we will check, see. Good. Ooh, that's pretty. Nice. Good. Good. Okay. Good. All right, everybody out. We're going to do it one more time. Okay, so go ahead and just walk on out. Don't run on the slick surface out there. Okay, first dog, all the way around to this spot, please. 
Very nice. Very nice. Easy. Good. Shake, turn. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Very nice. You made that happen. That's awesome. Okay, next dog, please. Watch your eye contact. Shake, palm. Beautiful. Shake, palm. Okay, you lost contact there. Watch your eyes, because that's killing you. Very nice there. Shake, turn. Good, good. Shake, turn. Beautiful job. Okay. Next, next dog, next dog, please. Okay, you come back. You, you came in like a ball of energy fire fusion thing. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to get this dog to look at your hand and then you're going to back up. So you're walking backwards like this, nice and calm, and then you're going to step away from your hand. So your hand's going to stay out there, but you're going to step away from it. So watch me. So I have my dog here. I step away from my hand. Shake it, because I know my dog's going to want to look. Oh, look at those pretty pictures right there. So that's gorgeous. You got the shot of that? Okay, we need him to come to every show. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Can you bring him to all the shows? <laughs> You're going to make some money, buddy. <laughs> So then you come in here and you're shaking your hand so the dog's looking at your hand so that it doesn't go that way. And you have your palm like this, shake your hand. And when you get to that corner, you're gonna shake your hand and say turn, okay? So back up nice, slow, and easy. Wow, <laughs> you need him at every show. No eye contact. Good, good. Easy, easy. That's good, that's good, that's good. Shake, turn, beautiful, 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 yeah! <laughs> that was awesome. Now, smile. I know, I could see him getting all anxious with walking, can you see that? <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. you're thinking about that. Yeah. You have to not think about that. Okay. Because he's trying to look at your hand, but he's reading the tension. Right. And I can see that tension right yeah, there. Yeah, because normally he flips out into circles. And but he didn't. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, you just have to keep communicating and put that out of your head. Okay. And if you, if you anticipate that, mm -hmm. you're going to create that situation. Okay. So, okay, next dog, please. Oh, I forgot to give you love. Yes, Uncle Eric's giving you love. Oh, dude. Nice. That's okay. Shake your hand. Turn. Good. Now you didn't really turn on that corner right there. Look at me. On that corner you went like this. You need to go like this. Yes, just like that. There you go. See? The dog responded to that beautifully. Okay, next please. Oh, okay, Uncle Eric again. <laughs> this is our thing. Yes. Okay, turn. You kind of, sort of. Turn, turn, nope, the other way. I'm gonna give you some bubble gum. Okay, so on the corner, you're turning like this. Yes. Now how come you can do it when you're standing still? <laughs> oh, it's my fault. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's going best in show. <laughs> okay, next please. Good, forward, nice and easy, shake, turn, good, forward, shake, turn, good. That was really nice. The only thing is, when you're here, palm forward. So you're just, you're going like this when you're getting forward, but you're making your turns good. Okay. And what, the reason why your dog is slow to respond is you're not continuously communicating. That's, okay. uh-huh. With the loose leash, right. am I getting enough communication with the shake? Oh the yeah, because your dog's responding to every time you shake that. Okay. You guys see the dog responding to that? So you're shaking, but here's what's happening. When you shake, you're not giving any communication for a straight. 
shake, go this way. So what happens is your dog kind of loses focus a little bit because you're not communicating. And then when you get on the turn, then you have to get their attention again to tell it to turn. And, and so you would be smoother if you consistently were communicating. Okay, so pop over that side so it's a straight line. <laughs> Will you stop stressing that dog out? Oh, you know. <laughs> okay, let's see you come on in. Good, solid communication. Good, good, good. Watch your palm. Good. Turn. Very nice. Keep going, keep going. Palm. Beautiful. Keep going, keep going. Now that was perfect. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, let me explain something before she takes off. She probably didn't do this on purpose, <laughs> but when she let out all six foot of that lead, it was a leap of faith right there. How did the dog respond to that? Beautifully. It's okay if the dog steps on that leash. It's okay if the dog trips in the beginning. But now you're learning. The dog is training. You're, you're, you've got a relationship starting right there. When you train on a short lead, you're hindering yourself. That was beautiful. Okay, take your dog to the end over there. Okay, next please. Oh, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay, turn. Don't forget to shake, and your palm needs to face into the ring. Shake into the ring. There it is, there it is, not behind you. Good, that was fantastic. Now, how well did your dog do that time? Much better, exactly. Okay, let's see what you got. Shake your hand. Into the ring, good, nice and smooth. Shake your hand, make your turn. Wow, look at that. Shake your hand, make your turn. Look at that, guys, that's incredible. Woohoo! Yeah! Man, are we seeing a difference in these dogs? Group one. Mwah, mwah. That was fantastic. And you stand perfectly square. Guys, look at me for a second. If I want my dog to go straight, and my shoulders are square, and my dog is in front of me, and if I back up like this, my dog's going to be perfectly straight. But if I back up like this, see what my shoulders are doing? my dog instinctively is going to want to swing over here. So your dog is going to be crooked as you take off. And then you're going to have to try to straighten it out. Eye contact is killing some of you because you're trying to fix a problem that is not going to be fixed with eye contact. What's going to fix the problems is paying attention to that hand. And I shouldn't have to tell any of you to stop looking at your dogs at this point. Okay, so I want you to let out a little bit more lead. And I want you guys to be aware of the direction of your palm. Okay, so back up, take this dog around, please. Put your hand, yes. Yes, the palm is the direction of where you want your dog to go. Get that hand in front, keep it smooth. Keep it smooth and in front, not to the back. Beautiful, keep it forward. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Gosh, guys, look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. But you keep wanting to bring it back. I do. Yep, right. so I'm gonna put the shot collar on you to help you. This is for you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> okay, go ahead and go. <laughs> That's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful communication. That was fantastic. But the second this dog passes this threshold right here, as soon as that nose hits this spot, as soon as that foot reaches this spot, that dog has to be spot on. The reach and drive, the balance, and everything according to your breed standard needs to be perfect the second it hits here. So what do most people do? They walk in, set up their dog, stand around waiting for people. 
<clears throat> when you walk through that threshold, you're showing your dog. You're not just standing around because that's going to set the pace of what you're telling your dog we're doing as a team right here. Now, I want you to go ahead and bring this dog in. And the only part that's important to me is that threshold. So bring your dog in right here, and then you can bring your dog all the way around to the other side. Okay, so come in, but this is the only part that's important to me. Okay, now stop. Now, what did your dog look like this right there at that ring? Did it look good? Look ready. You look ready? What do you guys think? No. Dog was, the dog was in the ring, but it's kind of looking at stuff, and it's like, whoa, look at that over there. It wasn't showing itself. So what I want you to change on this one here is I want you to change your energy. Okay. And you're going to back up like you did. That was really, really good. But try going back a little bit further. Okay, so don't look at your dog. Put that hand right in front and run into the ring. That was beautiful, wasn't it? See the difference there? Okay, we still have some things we need to work on, but look at the difference of how that dog, if, if that dog walked in like he did the first time and you were the judge, did that impress you at all? No. And that's the way most of your people are gonna walk into that ring. Your competition is gonna walk in just like that. And then all of a sudden he's gonna come in with this dog. What does that tell the judge? That's dynamite. This person's serious about showing this dog. He, he really, really, truly believes in this dog right here. And with respect, gets respect. Let's dissect this skill a little bit more. When, if you think of this skill as just entering the ring, then you're losing the whole concept of this. This skill is prep preparing the dog to show. It's setting the pace of winning. It's earning the respect of the dog and the judge when you do this. All these things are creating the skills that are needed to win in this ring. If I can get my dog to look good here, perfectly, <laughs> that gives me the skills that if this judge is looking at dogs at this corner right here, I know how to get my dog to look good here or there or there. So it's not just a skill of entering the ring. It's a skill of foundation for what's going to happen in that ring. Okay, come back. Let's go ahead and put your dog over here again. I'm going to dissect this a little bit. The first thing you did was hunch over your dog. Okay. So your dog went down. Okay. If you're standing up, your dog will be up like this. The second thing is, especially with a breed like this, you started off running forward. Mm -hmm. Running forward, the dog wants to get out in front like that. So if you want to set the pace of this dog, of you being in charge, the best thing you can do is get them to focus on your hand, okay. and you're going to get square with the dog, okay. because that way the dog will be straight. Okay. And then you're going to back up okay. and let your dog follow that hand. And if you do that, your dog is going to be straight and focused on what it needs to focus on, which is your hand. So go ahead and get in front of your dog. Don't eyeball your dog. Okay, let out some lead. Okay, stop looking at your dog. Look over your dog. Okay, put the bait in the lead hand. Okay, now walk backwards, then turn and go. Beautiful. Beautiful, right there, right there, oh yeah! See what a difference that made right there? Okay, when you, you're, when you, look at me. When you come into the ring and you're like your competition where you're over your dog and looking at your dog, 
your dog scooches down and your dog looks up at you. There's no possible way for it to have a true natural gait when it's looking at you. Because it's doing long, short, long, short. And when you get in front and you get that dog to start focusing on your hand, you can start to back up. I need a leash without a dog on it. Great, thank you. That's perfect. Okay, let's say my dog's over here. If I walk, I don't care where my dog is at. I want my dog to follow me. So if I walk backwards, what happens to my dog? Straight. It gets perfectly straight. That's what I want the judge to see. Perfectly straight. So now I step away from my dog and now my dog follows my hand. See how that works? And I don't have to look at my dog at all. So good job. Next person. Very nice. Look at that. Give her a hand. That's beautiful. <laughs> you should practice this every day for a week. And do head straight, do fit pause, drop your hand down. Do your fit pause, do your head straight and do this for an entire week until you get this perfect. You should be able to come in in a moment's notice, chairs around, make it crowded, and then as soon as your dog hits that threshold, it looks absolutely drop dead gorgeous. If you can be the best at entering the ring, where are you at when the judging starts? Yes. Why? Who says? Every judge. The judge tells you that. Yes, you have to. The judge it. tells you that in every single ring. I've never been in a show where you don't have to go against. No, 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 that's not what I said. Yes, the, the judge says why not? At every single ring, they tell you you have to stack your dog first. Yes. No. no. I'm going to disagree with that. Well, I've been showing a few Scotties. <laughs> and every every show I've been to and ones I've watched. Okay. Alright, listen up. You have judges that tell people to show their dog on a loose lead. And who do they give the win to? The one that's strung up. Because nobody else knows how to show on a loose lead. So the judges can tell you what to do. They'll say, okay, bring your dog over there. That's fine, thank you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gate my dog into the ring and have that dog looking good. Even if there's dogs lined up here, I'll bring my dog out here so they can see it and then go into my place. Okay, so the judges are telling you what they want you to do, but it doesn't mean you have to stop showing your dog. So we're, we get caught up in semantics sometimes on things like that. Yes? So um, most, almost all of my judge friends uh -huh. will tell me, I pick my dog when it first comes in the ring. Absolutely. Yeah. I saw him come in, I knew <laughs> that was, unless Absolutely. he can't move or does something, he is my winner. What is judging? A process of elimination. If I'm in the ring, I have a job to do, I'm looking for my breed winner right off the bat. And then I'm looking for my best of opposite. Okay, and then eventually best of winners, blah, 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 everything else. So if you come in the ring and you're the best at entering the ring, where are you at? You're the breed or the variety. And then everything else comes after that. So focus, five week training program. Week one, entering that ring. Don't dismiss this exercise. Those who really focus on this will go much further than anybody else. And the reason why I say that is because does your competition even know that this exists? No. So how are they going to come into the ring? Dum -da -dum -da -dum. You know, hey, well, how was dinner last night? And you're going to come in showing. Imagine a judge watching a ring full of people and they see this person here come in like a million bucks and everybody else just walks in like it's another day. 
That's respect right there. And I'm going to reward that respect. Yes? Um, in the Golden Ring, there's always so many dogs, they almost always tell you to come in and stack your dog. Right. Is there a rule to how to stack? My question is, if I taught my dog a really good free stack, can you go down there and free stack it, or do you have to do the sit on the ground and stack it? Okay. So I don't care if it's the Golden Ring or the Junior Handling Ring or the pie bald alabaster whatever ring it's like if you got a bunch of dogs in here and they call your number and they tell you where they want you to line up that's where they want you to line up but it doesn't mean that i'm not going to show my dog so like for instance we have these dogs here so i'm going to come in with my imaginary dog and the judge, uh, this is where I'm supposed to go. So I enter this ring. And when I come into this ring, I'm showing my dog. There we go. That was good. And then I go to my spot. That's where I'm going to go to my spot, right there. Sometimes you have handlers cat-calling you and yelling. The handlers do it. Watch the handlers. Watch them. They're showing their dogs. And then they go to their spot right there. They have a job to do. It's my job to show this judge I've got the best dog in this ring. I'm not staying there. I'm just coming into the ring so I can gate my dog. And then I'm going to go to my spot over there. What's that? Sometimes we're not really the ring even do that. There's not even room to gate in because there's so many. They're splitting them into three or four. Right, that's why you've got to find some space to show your dog. You have to show your dog. Well, you don't have to. You can be just like everybody else. Yeah. I mean, I think it makes the most sense to me in, in the, the group rings because you have more, I mean, right. it's actually like you to come in the ring now. Right, right. You know? It makes a lot more sense in that ring to me than the actual ring ring, unless it's a specialty with more space. Okay, so listen up. So. What you're saying here that is that makes more sense in the group ring, but not so much in the, the breed ring or specialty because you don't have the space. Well, in specialty, I would have the space, but not in the typical, you know, breed ring and an all breed. I don't have space. To do okay. Do you remember what the ring size was like when they had Westminster actually at Madison Square Garden? The way we like that, that is circle Exactly. Right. There's no room at all. It's up to you to find as little space as possible and make your dog look good. You treat the breed ring like it was best in show. The same emphasis, the same importance there. We can't separate these rings. We, we, you know, you got people who their goal is to get the points. That's their level. They set their limit right there. You have people that their goal is to get the breed or variety. And then you have people, it's like, oh, I would love to place in the group. You're setting your limitations right there. If I got to get to best in show, I got to show like I'm in best in show. And you can sit there and listen to all these other people, or you can practice like this and make your dog look phenomenal in the smallest space as possible. You're not being rude, you're showing your dog. And then you go over to your spot and you can blend in with the other people at that point. But if you come into the ring like everybody else, then you, now the judge has to say, gosh, who's my best of breed going to be? Remember what her statement was? The second the dog entered the ring, that was my best of breed. And you're not gonna get it by walking to a spot and standing there like everybody else, guaranteed. Let me go behind you first. Isn't this as much the communication with the dog as well? So whether you yes. Go or 20 feet, you can go 10 feet. Right. Signal for the dog. You're telling your dog when you show like that, we're serious about this. We're going to have fun. This is cool. But if you walk in lazily and step in your spot that you've been assigned, then you're not sending any message to your dog at that point. So this is a mental game. This is a physical game. This is all kinds of different things. And that's why I say the people who fight this exercise are the ones who are setting their limitation. I guarantee you that. Yes. Um, more and more often now, I'm seeing people go into the toy ring in the, for the classes, that the judge is over at their table doing 
yeah. yeah. For their book and the one before, and the stewards telling everybody to come in line. Up. Right. So would you go ahead and come in that way just for your dogs? Oh, yeah. That you're going to come in I don't care what the judge is doing. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. It, well, assume, yep, to... yep, that was perfect. It, you'll, it's my job to attract the attention of the judge and transfer it to my dog. So if I come in and my judge is writing in a book, I'll, that's amazing! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> and the judge wants to turn around and see what amazing, what's amazing? <laughs> Oh yeah, that is amazing. Now I'm going to go back and write in my book was that other people walk over to their spot. So again, there's so much hidden information about this one exercise right here. I'm giving you this opportunity to help you be consistent at winning. If you want to focus on what everybody else does, what everybody else says, what everybody else doesn't do, go ahead. That's fine, but you're going to lose more consistently that way. If you make this best in show right here, when Kent Boyles goes into the best in show ring, is that important when he enters that ring? Absolutely. So why should your best of breed ring be any less important? We got to get there first. Yeah, and this is how you're going to do it, I guarantee. So one entire week of entering the ring. That's what you want to do. The head straight position needs to be done every single day. It needs to be, let's go potty, head straight. Let's go feeding time, head straight. Let's go here, head straight. Let's get ready for bed, head straight. That is what's going to really earn your respect and trust and your leadership. The fit pause stuff, that's really going to help you. When you get that dog doing the front pads, the rear pads, all four pads, the head straight, that is what you're using as tools for you to become the leader. If you touch your dog, if you fidget with your dog, if you think about your dog, like right now, that is all bad stuff. Because what that does is it makes the dogs not want to be near you. So totally ignore your dogs when you're waiting to do something because you're using all that energy. So you should do a head straight when that dog's getting out of control. You're telling that dog, I'm the leader. What happened when the Irish wolfhound kept biting that lady? Come back. Why did he take off with a leap? No, because he wasn't going to no. Ah! No. See, he doesn't respect you. When you get over to the end, ah, ah, back up, back. Come on, come on. When you get him, stop looking at him, stop eyeballing him. When you get him to the end, you need to do that head straight. And by the time you get back to me, I want the head straight. Come on, Claude. This way, over here. Stand. Good. Very nice. Head straight. Good. See how he's better for me now? Each time is a little better and a little better. That's good. Now, you're going to go back to mom and you're going to be good. Okay? Okay. Very nice. Okay, come here, mom. Now, with confidence, don't look at him. I want you to back away, ah, settle, settle. I want you to back away and slowly and smoothly take him around to the end. There you go, good job. She didn't do anything. She didn't do anything. Did that Irish wolfhound respect her? No. So to get her through the exercise, I needed to prove to that dog that there was a leader in that area. So what did I do? And did it work? Yep. Absolutely. But the thing that's going to be your enemy is your brain. You cannot think about anything else. Nothing can be in this head while you're working on this exercise other than that. You can't think about a plane flying over. 
Even if it's distracting your dog, you can't think about that. Because if you think about that, what is the dog gonna think about? The plane. If you have a bitchin' season and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is gonna be horrible, what's your dog gonna think about? The bitchin' season. So you have to learn to clear your head. I can teach you the mechanics, but I can't get into your head and fix that. So when you're doing anything and your dog is being showing that they don't respect you, head straight. Walk them around, head straight. We just did head straight sessions and I want you to look at all these dogs. Don't these dogs look better now? Absolutely. As a group, they look fantastic. And you're not strangling them, which is really good. Yes. I am strangling her. <laughs> not right now, you're not. Right this second. But what do I do when she's like, like she just keeps, everyone else like all calm and she's pulling and trying to sniff stuff. And then I try like just to hold it. You stick your hand in front of their nose with a really good piece of bait and be more exciting and more yummy than whatever they're sniffing or looking at. It's your responsibility as the handler to find something. Look at that. That's awesome right there. That's what you want, guys. That is what you want. And if you're fidgeting with your dogs, you're not going to get that. So that is your goal okay so what we're going to do now is i want you guys you're going to come in and you're going to enter the ring when we enter the ring what is the best way to get a dog looking good quickly communication, communication. what else start before you enter what's that if you try to get the dog looking good here, the dog's not going to look good to there. So you need to have this dog where it's focused on your hand. I would back up, get it focused on the hand so the second you hit where that is there, the dog's looking good. Now what I just did, I'm now facing this direction so my dog's stride's not going to look good till there. That's too late. So I need to be in a position where I can back up, turn, and go. As soon as I cross that threshold, that dog needs to look good. Yeah, there it is. Okay, over here, next. Entering the ring. I'm gonna give you a couple of tips that are gonna help you out in entering the ring. Usually you have a very small area right here and with the small area, you wanna maximize what your body and communication is doing. So the best way to start this out is you're going to be facing this direction with your shoulders square on the dog. If you tilt your shoulders and body like this, you're communicating with your dog with your body language and you're telling them to swing out, which means if they swing out, they're not gonna look good right here at the entrance of that gate. So I want to stand here and I'm gonna flip around like you can see from the other side. And you're gonna have this hand right in front of you with the palm facing you. Shake your hand so you gain the attention and walk backwards. When you walk backwards, you're going to step away. So at this point, you step away and continue on with that hand to go forward. Nice, good job. I would let a little more lead out. Try one more time with a little more lead out. That is. There it is, that was perfect. That was perfect.
Good job. Beautiful. Don't do that. Let out more leash. Let out more leash. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. That was gorgeous. Thank you. 